How does the universe decide what is real? Quantum Darwinism suggests that the classical reality we experience, solid objects, definite positions, emerges from the quantum world through a process similar to natural selection. In the quantum realm, particles can exist in superpositions, like being in two places at once. But interactions with the environment select stable states called pointer states, while fragile states fade away. These stable states are redundantly encoded in the environment, allowing multiple observers to see the same reality. For example, a chair reflects light, emits sound when moved, and interacts thermally with its surroundings, broadcasting its position so anyone can confirm where it is. Just like sturdy trees survive storms while weaker branches break, pointer states are the fittest survivors in the quantum world, forming the consistent shared reality we all observe. It's called quantum Darwinism. Imagine tiny particles existing in multiple states at once. When these particles interact with stuff around them, like air molecules or light, the universe picks the most stable states. These survivors, called pointer states, get shared everywhere. It's like the universe is running a huge selection process, making sure we all see the same ball on the table or the same tree in the park. Quantum Darwinism shows how the universe's rules turn chaos into the shared reality we all experience. Quantum Darwinism, developed by Wojciech Zurek, is a theory that explains how the classical reality we experience emerges from the underlying quantum world. In the quantum realm, particles exhibit behaviors like superposition and entanglement, which are vastly different from the deterministic and stable nature of the classical world. Quantum Darwinism posits that this transition is facilitated by the environment, which acts as a selective medium. When a quantum system interacts with its environment, certain quantum states, called pointer states, prove robust against decoherence and are redundantly encoded in the environment. This redundancy allows these states to dominate and be accessible to multiple observers, creating a shared and consistent classical reality. Importantly, Quantum Darwinism suggests that this process is akin to Darwinian evolution, where survival of the fittest applies to quantum states that can withstand environmental interactions. Example. Imagine a particle's position interacting with the surrounding environment, like photons scattering off it. The environment spreads this positional information in a way that all observers can independently verify, ensuring they agree on the particle's location. Analogy. Think of a newspaper reporting the same news story to an entire city. This shared information ensures everyone has a consistent understanding of events, much like how the environment broadcasts stable quantum states, forming a consistent classical reality for observers. In quantum mechanics, a particle can exist in a superposition of multiple states, such as being in two places at once. However, when we observe it, this superposition collapses into a single definite state. The question of what causes this collapse and why the universe seems to choose one outcome over others is central to the measurement problem. Quantum Darwinism addresses this by suggesting that the collapse is not a result of direct observation by a conscious observer, but a consequence of the environment's interaction with the quantum system. The environment selects and amplifies certain stable quantum states, pointer states, while suppressing others through a process of decoherence. This natural selection of states creates the illusion of wave function collapse, giving rise to the deterministic classical world we observe. In the classic double slit experiment, an electron exists in a superposition of passing through both slits. When it interacts with air molecules or a detector, the superposition collapses and we observe it passing through only one slit. This collapse occurs due to environmental decoherence, which selects a definite path for the particle. Imagine choosing between two paths in a forest. Until you interact with the terrain environment, all paths are potential options, superposition. The moment you step forward, one path becomes real, pointer state, guided by environmental constraints. 
Decoherence is the process by which a quantum system loses its coherence, the property that allows quantum states to interfere with one another. When a quantum system interacts with its environment, this interaction disrupts the delicate phase relationships between the components of its superposition. As a result, the quantum system transitions to a state that behaves more classically. Importantly, decoherence doesn't destroy the quantum states, but transfers the information about them to the environment. This process is crucial because it explains why we don't observe quantum interference effects in everyday life. It is the first step in the emergence of classicality from quantum mechanics as the environment eliminates fragile quantum states and stabilizes robust ones. Example, consider a particle in a vacuum. Left undisturbed, it maintains coherence and displays quantum behaviors. Introduce air molecules, and their collisions with the particle rapidly disrupt its quantum phase, forcing it to behave classically. Analogy, think of a soap bubble floating in still air. It's delicate and intact. If a gust of wind blows, the bubble bursts, leaving behind only its remnants, pointer states, as stable classical behavior. Pointer states are quantum states that remain stable under interactions with the environment. They are robust enough to survive decoherence and are naturally selected by the environment because of their resilience. Pointer states often correspond to classical properties like position and momentum, which are less susceptible to environmental noise. The idea of pointer states is central to quantum Darwinism because they are the fittest quantum states, able to endure and proliferate while others fade away. This natural selection ensures that the classical properties of systems are those that can withstand environmental scrutiny. Example, a photon bouncing off a particle encodes information about the particle's position over time, allowing multiple observers to perceive the same reality. This positional stability is characteristic of a pointer state. Analogy, imagine a sturdy tree in a storm. While weak branches break under the force of wind, the trunk remains intact and continues to thrive. Similarly, pointer states are the unshakable trunks of quantum systems. In quantum Darwinism, the environment is not just a source of noise or decoherence. It is also a broadcasting system that spreads information about pointer states. When a quantum system interacts with the environment, the resulting information about its stable properties, like position or momentum, is encoded and distributed widely. This redundancy in environmental encoding ensures that multiple observers can access the same information about the system, allowing for consistent and objective observations. This broadcasting mechanism explains why observers can agree on the properties of a system, even if they are physically separated. Example, if a ball rests on a table, photons reflected from its surface scatter throughout the room, carrying information about the ball's location. This information is encoded in the environment, air molecules, photons, etc., allowing all observers in the room to perceive the same reality. Analogy. Think of a town square where a crier announces the time every hour. No matter where you are in the square, you can hear the same announcement, ensuring a consistent understanding of the time. One of the most crucial aspects of quantum Darwinism is the redundancy of information encoded in the environment. Redundancy ensures that the same information about a system's pointer states is available through multiple independent channels. This widespread distribution makes it possible for different observers to independently verify the same reality. Without redundancy, reality would remain subjective as individual observers might receive incomplete or conflicting information. The redundant encoding of information transforms a probabilistic quantum world into a deterministic classical one by creating the appearance of an objective reality. Example, a chair reflects photons, produces sound waves when moved, and interacts thermally with its surroundings. Each of these interactions encodes information about the chair's position, ensuring multiple observers can agree on its location. Analogy. 
Imagine distributing copies of a document to a crowd. The more copies you distribute, the more likely everyone will receive and agree on the same information. Quantum Darwinism draws a parallel between Darwinian evolution and the selection of quantum states. Just as species adapt and survive in their environments, quantum states are subjected to selection pressures from the environment. Fragile superpositions quickly decohere, while robust pointer states persist and dominate. This natural selection ensures that the states we observe are the most stable and consistent under environmental interactions. Over time, these pointer states form the foundation of classical reality. Example. In a turbulent gas cloud, the position of a particle is more likely to survive as a pointer state than its phase information, which is highly sensitive to decoherence. Analogy. Imagine a game of survival where only the strongest competitors endure. Pointer states are like the survivors of this game, defining the observable reality. Quantum Darwinism provides a mechanism for resolving the quantum measurement problem by shifting the focus from conscious observation to environmental interactions. The environment acts as the observer, selecting and broadcasting stable pointer states. This explains why classical properties such as position or momentum are universally observable, while quantum properties like superposition and entanglement are not directly accessible. The redundancy of information encoding in creates the illusion of an objective reality, even though the underlying quantum world is probabilistic and subjective. Example, the paradox of Schrodinger's cat is resolved. The cat state, alive or dead, interacts with the environment, redundantly encoding the outcome. Observers tapping into this encoded information will see the same reality. Analogy. Objective reality is like a stage performance broadcast live on television. Even though only the actors experience the stage firsthand, the broadcast ensures that the audience sees a consistent performance. Quantum Darwinism is a compelling theoretical framework, but it remains an area of active research. Experimental validation of its principles, such as the redundancy of information and the role of pointer states, requires precise control of quantum systems. Technologies like quantum computers, photonic systems, and trapped ions provide promising platforms for testing the theory. However, questions remain about its universality. Does quantum Darwinism apply to all quantum systems, or are there exceptions? How does the theory reconcile with interpretations of quantum mechanics that emphasize the role of the observer? Further research will help refine and validate this framework. Example, recent experiments with photonic systems have shown evidence of redundant information encoding, supporting quantum Darwinism. However, scaling these findings to macroscopic systems remains a significant challenge. Analogy Quantum Darwinism is like a new scientific map. While parts of the terrain have been explored and charted, many areas remain uncharted, awaiting future expeditions. 